right. Well, the time has come, the walrus said, to, uh, to have a meeting. So, here we are. Um, on my end of things, well, I mean, I don't think you get to choose who lets the walrus speak, so it just does what it do. Like a 1,200 pound animal. Any which ways. Um, big thing on my end, I've done a whole bunch of updates. Uh, still have yet to put any of the updates on World Anvil, but that is because I had a whole bunch of work come up and I had a focus shift to that. Um, but I should be getting things up this week. Um, in terms of the downtime actions, I'm ready to put that up. I just need to put the stuff I, I finished on my end on the document so I can put it up on World Anvil. Um, but if you want to look at that pie, again, just to see the critical uh, side of things, to see if that side is all good, uh, that'd be great. That way I can, once you get that look over, I can, I can put up on World Anvil. Um, I would look at it, uh, not tonight, just because I need to still get the three remaining things that are not listed on the uh, Google Sheet that you all have access to, from my end to it, but uh, yeah, anything beyond tonight. Yeah, that'll work. Um, but other than that, uh, let's see here, I did some updates for a few of our other systems as well, so if you've been, like, looking around at, like, the, um, reputation document, some of the, like, the RP event stuff, or things of that nature, there's, you'll probably see some updates on those particular files. Um, just looking through my notes again, do, 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 do. a lot of progress has been made in terms of the... Mine's blanking on this word. Uh, Legacy, help me out here. The thing we've been doing in, in admin, going through the team. Yeah. Uh, clean up. Clean up, thank you. Yes. Yes, the clean up. Yes, the clean up. A lot of progress is made on that. Um, I would say, from the looks of it. one moment. I just got a response from somebody and I just updated it. So. Nice. Nice. Yeah, from the looks of it, we have about halfway uh, completed, so making good progress. At least, you know, people we contacted slash confirmed slash uh, removed tax for. Yep. So, you know, making good progress. Yeah, I'm working on it when I can. Mm -hmm. And it's very much appreciated. Um, other than that, though... So almost every single important role has been contacted or accounted for. Everything left is singular roles. Mm -hmm. I can hear him just fine. Work on the document, but uh, mm -hmm. I just need the copies of what I got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, I just every time I look at it, I'm like, okay, this need a need to mark this as unread again. Just as, as I see new things to me. Um. All that said, I have too much to go over this week from my end because it's mostly just been an, an update and a change things around type of thing. But for the team members. Well, like I see types of what they're typing, because I imagine they have a uh, big bon th boom thing to discuss. Um, for those who are looking at RP events or those who are wanting to do DM stuff, I would think, uh, if you're full-time GM, what mission area you want to work in and look at the different uh, mission themes that we have for that region. And then, you know, design your missions from there. You don't have to, like, you know, write anything down or anything like that, but start formulating what you're doing, or look at some of the missions we have already uh, formulated. You can find them in the, uh, the the lore folder, I believe, or the mission folder. I'm pretty sure it's the mission folder. Or in the region uh, channels here. For, like, anything that we've noted down for, like, potential mission ideas and whatnot. Um, and that'll just, you know, get you a, a kickoff starting point for your area. Or if you want to, you can just, you know, do your own thing, keeping in mind the, uh, the general theming of that region. Um, if you're part-time, you know, just, just choose a region that you want to focus on, and, uh, keep in mind the general theming. 
and uh, run games when you can. But uh, you don't need to run games until we are launched. It might be a good idea to pre-make some games for you, so you can just have a nice run. I hit the ground running setup, but uh, yeah, that's that's up to you if you want to do that. Uh, I'm not worried too much about you need to have a fully made 30-page document to run your games. You, as long as you can run your games, your players are having fun, I'm happy. Um, in terms of RP events, uh, Sky has been doing a lot of good stuff, I've been noticing, in the RP events channel. So, uh, if you're interested in helping out with that particular event, the uh, like introduction to the world type of thing with the, each different region, going to like a, a cultural overview type of stuff, uh, do hit them up. Uh, also, keep in mind other RP events you might be wanting to run during the uh, RP period that we'll start with. Um, and then, you know, RP events you might want to run once we hit to adventuring time. Imagine there'll be RP events triggered from DMs, which will help out on your end since you won't really think about too many things. But, uh, yeah, RP events just... Keep an eye on RP Events uh, team channel and, you know, think of some RP Events that you could run. Uh, also, if you're interested, since I just noticed another RP Events person joined, hello, Kiel. Um, if you're interested, uh, help on that particular cultural event would be appreciated. Because I think that's a pretty solid idea and it'll help get people immersed in the world easier. All right, and from that side of things, um, just looking at all these notes. We have too much other to update, so we we'll look at legacy for anything they want to bring up. I imagine they're still typing. In the meantime, all right. So four big things to go over on my end. Once we've gone through economy, creation, and tech tags, I'll be contacting the respective channels for new heads. If you're interested in joining the running for that, you can let me know and I'll put the initial tags for you. Nice. Yeah. That is most excellent indeed. I know uh, we've been mostly focusing on uh, events and GMs, or like multi-tag people. Um, but yeah, no. Responsibility is in like, a, oh god, horrifying. I think that's them. Yeah, 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 that. Yeah, okay, I understand. Yes, it is a scary thing, responsibility. Mm, yes. All right. No responsibility, I just want Regions to... are set on their initial heads for now. I'm hmm. running Elderia. Sithums is handling Barisia. Blackheart is running Go Lighter with Jokey assisting, and most likely will have Duke working significantly on it too since he's indicated interested. Arlogas is under NERP. Mm hmm. Fortunately, Logos has uh, Trub left us with a huge amount of stuff that we can work with. So uh, that one, anyone can really run. Uh, like, he went pretty detailed for, like, the main mission, the mission themes that can be placed there, generally what's going on and all that, so it's very much appreciated that. Yeah. Yes, no, I'm de facto head of uh, our Logos. All right. I think you have at least one more thing to bring up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep on waiting. But uh, in the meantime, I 
No one's going to beat me. Uh, in the meantime, um, I know you were looking at some of the other political side of things, like brushing up on the bounty system. Did you ever get around to that, Pi? Yeah, yeah, I, I keep marking Divinity Team as unread so I can, I can look at uh, the letter system. So, it's on my docket to look at. I also need to give a proper uh, peer review for your class, uh, Black Art. Just like go through the document uh, and give it references and whatnot. You can take time on that. That's that 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 doesn't make me think that's out immediately. Yeah. Just yeah. it'll unlock afterwards. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that one's more like an unlock class, so it's it's gonna be a bit mm -hmm. before they can even unlock it. Yeah. Just because I I think unlocking a class is like twenty prestige, so it's it's kind of up there. Of course, they can do it in, in like a main quest line, which is yeah. not going to require any prestige. But uh, yeah. uh, we do have a person for creation. Mm, nice. That applied. Very nice. Just creation, though. Okay. Any other applications? Nope. That's it. We're okay. uh, we're still waiting on the one person to submit their uh, document. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, now's a good time as any. Uh, if you're interested in joining the team? Very much appreciate it. Uh use DMs, could use event handlers, uh, we can use any of the other roles such as creation team, political team, divinity team, uh, economy team, but mostly we need DMs and events. If I had the time. Mm -hmm. Yep, time is a, a curse. I'm good at doing handling back end stuff. Yeah. That's all I have time for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, come launch, I'll be able to uh, run a full group on my scheduling. I'm also looking for a job at this point in time, which is another thing that's been draining my time away from, from all my other projects. Uh, I, I feel like I will have the time to run another game. Specifically for the living world, but uh, we'll see. Uh, Next up, clarifications on tags being moved around. Hmm. This is mostly for anyone who hasn't been in the last few meetings. The generic staff tag and general volunteer are transitioning out of system development. The basic staff role is someone trained to run NPC and RP in text. Events team is a qualification to run prepared larger RP organized events with the potential for mechanical effects and rewards. General volunteers will be getting contacted in the next few waves of cleanup to either transition into a department for developmental work or to general staff. One last thing after this. Very nice, very nice. Um... Also, 107 character submissions. Very nice, very nice indeed. Um, for those characters, uh, as it stands right now with the current DM team, I believe we have about half of them, a little under half, that will be gaining player slots with their current DM size. Um, and we can go, everyone else can go civilian if they want to. Um, and we'll still have plenty of civilian slots remaining, so if people are interested in just joining civilian or wanting to put your hand in the ring for, for uh, adventuring tag. Now's the time. But civilians should be about three, four times the number of DM slots we have. Hmm, 15 Evo Pop. All right. I mean, that's three groups right there. Three full groups it of is. evil. I mean, technically, you can go groups of four to six, but, you know. Not bad. All right. 14% of submissions are evil. All right. Not a bad percentage. Oh, yeah. I mean, the uh, the form itself does have, like, a, a pie chart for different percentages of who is what. But, uh, I mean, 
Be interesting. I feel like the uh, community would be interested in knowing that percentage too. <laughs> you do like your spreadsheets. By that I mean. Yeah, there's a difference between chaotic evil and not. Mm -hmm. So it could be lawful evil. That means the only that's that's evil. Well, it could be murder, hover, or evil. I mean, I think if they don't know that, they'll soon learn that that is something that they don't need to do. Unless they want to, you know, not play very often, because they'll make new characters often. You just go around murdering people, you're going to get hit by the guards. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're doing it in a city channel. Like, you might not even get the kill off. You, you will probably get slammed by guards before you even get close enough to killing someone. All guards outside the quest are stronger than you. Don't try it. <laughs> I would say they're akin to Morrowind guards, where if you're coming into the game, uh, just like brand new, eyes gleaming and thinking you can do whatever the fuck you want, uh, those guards hit like a truck. You'll have to get, you know, Enchanted Blade first, and then you can kill them. Oh, know? okay, so it's not like the Witcher 3 guards, where they're just always going to be stronger than you? There are certain time, places where they will be, like, if you go to the palace uh, of, like, a, a lord or a, a king, even, of a region, um, they are most likely going to be in the teens and oh, level. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then, like, the captain of the guard, if he's... The royal guards, like, the King's personal bodyguards, those ones are probably going to be 18th level. Yeah. So, uh, you, you, you know, choose your, your fights wisely. Yeah, don't mess with the spell blade captain of the guard. Yeah, this is a, uh, a high fantasy, high magic world. Don't mess with that spell blade captain of the guard there. He's probably going to... I, uh, I enjoy that we have mushroom guard people on the island, which means if they fuck with the guard... It's like you're in Dark Souls 1 and they're just going to punch the shit out of you. <laughs> I just can't wait to see people start to play games. Mm-hmm. Agreed. I want to see RP open and people start doing their thing. I like lurking every now and then, reading through chats. So, yeah. once 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 RP gets going and we start getting people in, and they're going, have a few ideas to advertise the living world. Once everything's full flow, I'll talk to you about that later, though. Mm -hmm. That's my. That's my. Strongest aspect of Dark Souls. Yeah. What was this goal for? Alright. Just need that last little bippy bop. Oh yeah. By bippy bop, I mean just dippy dappy. But uh. Um, looking at this... Though. Timing on your topic. I need to go over the numbers with you later so we have a transition plan from text launch to game launch. Yes, we do need that. Last topic for here is that of codifying the function and purpose of civilians, for the purposes of initial text launch at least. What I understand at the moment is that civilians are players constrained to characters that cannot join missions or most RP events, but can RP in their respective areas. Erp, could you describe what you would envision civilian gameplay and what we'd need to account for them? For example, if we need to track gold, progression, inventories. So for civilians, um, in my mind, they are essentially the same thing as adventuring characters, except they cannot go on missions unless 
during special circumstances. I'm not saying they 100% cannot go. There is times where they can go. Will you want a civilian on your mission as like a full adventuring member? Probably not. Just because they are not actual like fully strength characters. They are D4 hit dice and all that. Um, but the update will make them so like guard NPCs can be viable and you might have like certain people join you on like a mission or oh, it's a merchant cameo from this uh, civilian. Um, so. Other than that though, Mind is blanking, continuing to blank. Uh, other than that, though, civilians, they can go on RP events, they can do their thing. Um, they, they are, the big desire for civilians is to liven up the world in more ways than just RP events. They can go on RP events, they can, can talk do their over thing. that. Yeah. A civilian head at the moment? Shrub was working on that, correct? Uh, Shrub was one of the uh, team members, yes. Yeah. Right now, it was just me. And uh, I think Pi was also on the team for a bit. Because of the political side of it. If I remember correctly. It's been a while since civilian team, you know, had a meeting, so. Yeah. Um. At this point, I'm considered civilian head. Yeah. I mean, you could have an escort mission, which would be most unfortunate. Yeah. I'm sup, you just needed to know the precise status of organization on that and whether it needs a head or not. I'll file it with number one under positions to offer up. Sounds good. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they, they should be tracked for any major things that they have. So, consider them a player. In that case. Because they are a player. It's not one that can go on missions, or at least not actively, like adventuring players can. Well, if I've learned anything from speedrunning RE4, Remake, you just shoot Ashley in the head and say, fuck it. I need a, I need to play that. Yeah. It was pretty good. I, I've only ever played it when it first came out. Only the PlayStation 2, I think it was. Um, for the first initial village scene, and then that's, that's all I ever played of that game. The remake's pretty good. Yeah. I've been watching a Crusader play it. Speed runs of it. It's pretty uh, ridiculous what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, anything else to While they're doing their tippy tappy, anything anyone else would like to bring up? You can let them travel freely with a fee through the waypoints, probably, so they can go around and RP while having an economy dump for income. That should be it. I'm just organizing everything discussed here into a summary in text and then any questions, and then we can conclude. Excellent. Very good, very good. And yeah, one of the uh, the features of civilians is that they will gain access to more downtime days, so that should help their ability to actually make money and whatnot. Because they're not spending that time adventuring, they're spending that time doing their job. Or, you know, goofing off the bar, seeing what kind of civilian they are. Open a casino. Yeah. You know, a casino, maybe start doing some business with some uh, cartels, it's fine. I can't believe we have to bring a route pro a mission to keep players in check. <laughs> yeah. I've been watching way too much Ozarks of late. Anyways. Good stuff, good stuff indeed. Once we get that there, 
overview and last remarks, and that will be the meeting. In the meantime, how's everyone doing? Things going well? I've been super busy at work ever since I got promoted. Oh, congratulations on the promotion. Yeah, that's why. I... Mm -hmm. Yeah, they trust me enough to be responsible with stuff, so it's like, no. oh, okay. Responsibilities. Mm. Yeah. I, I told him, I was like, I mean, I'll do it if I have to. I just want, I'll, 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 I'll take the money, but yeah. You need some sleep, Jokey. That's too much hours. Yeah. See, I, I see 30 hours, and I'm like, that's disgustingly too many hours. I work 45 hours in one week. Still disgusting, yeah. I don't like that. I've only ever worked one full-time job, and it was not for me. Oh, um, when we give players uh, the ability to respect, is it a full respect, like stats and all? It depends on uh, the respect provided. If it's the, hey, we're transitioning to spheres, they have a full respect. Uh, if no, no. I mean, like, going from, like, fighter to wizard, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, obviously the stats don't translate yeah. to, like, say, a fighter to a wizard. Are we giving people full stat respects in that instance? If it is a full respect, they will have full stat respect. No problem. If it's like a, hey, we came up with this new class... Uh, we're giving them the opportunity to respect if they want to. Uh, you would only be able to change your class in that regard and things that would relate to that class. Okay. So it, it depends on the respect we're offering, but a full respect is you can respect your character entirely. You can go from Fish Boy Jones to uh, Goliath Manfred. I don't, I don't know. Because um, we'll need that answered at some point down the line for people. Mm hmm. It's true. It's true. Yeah. He's in stats. looks good. Uh, in terms of having the uh, world meeting, uh, yeah, we can post that in uh, what's the name of this channel? Uh, Council Chambers and Administration. Yeah, because uh, all region heads can see that channel, so post it there and get uh, Sithum's session so we can get a, a meeting together for us. Since I know that they can't actually uh, attend Sunday meetings anymore, which is why they're not here. Can't believe Sithems is slacking. <laughs> no potato for him this month. Oh, it's all, it's a monthly potato now. Mm. Oh, it, it's always been a month. I see. We uh, you're not kind trainers. Yeah, there should be some workarounds to help ease the uh, tracking burden on our end. I think um, one of the big things for downtime that could ease tracking would be the use of a downtime form. Because then anytime someone uses downtime, which is a main way they can trade or buy or sell or craft or et cetera, et cetera, that will track it for us. Like, just them doing that action alone will track it for us. Yeah. 
I don't want to limit uh, their actions, though, so I don't want to limit them from saying they can't have a certain amount of gold. If they want to be rich motherfuckers, they should be rich motherfuckers. They need to earn that money. It's going to be a while, because it takes a lot to, uh, to make money. But, uh, yeah. yeah. I think... Greetings, Adora. Um, wait, are they in? They're not on the call. Yeah. I Anyways. I contacted Adora to, to let her know that we're going to be starting up soon. So nice. Good. Nice. Um... But yeah, no, in terms of uh, tracking, I think, a form or a similar tech-based method will greatly reduce our uh, workload. It will be required to spend tracking both adventurers and civilians. But that's something that we can discuss in more detail uh, with War, I believe. Or, you know, we can keep discussing that now if you like. Pretty much. I mean, if it works, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. As a legacy says, anything anyone else would like to bring up? All right. Good stuff. Oh. Yep. We still need. Uh, I'm not sure if. Because. Uh, uh, what is it? Staff head isn't here, so I'm going to bring it up. Mm -hmm. We still need people to take over certain regions at, on staff and help us out. So if you mm -hmm. are in staff and you want to take a region, please look into the RP events channel. Mm -hmm. That is very true. Very true indeed. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, there was something I just remembered as I was like, anything else want to someone bring up? Um, and I remembered about this. Um, we were going to discuss two of inviting. And the oh, yeah, uh, right. the uh, one D and D change that they did, specifically having two weapon fighting base, you whenever you take the attack action, if you're rolling two weapons, you can just take a secondary attack as part of that base attack action instead of having to use your bonus yeah. action. Um, I mean, as slow as long as it's they're both light weapons, yeah. It's... Okay, so it it know. it it still follows the same rules. Like it, it, mm -hmm. if you don't have like uh, the fighting style, your offhand still does. The without modifier, if you have two dual dual wielding, uh, you still you can do the hit so, uh, heavy of it. If you have the funding style or IE feet, you can do it without penalty. But if you yeah, still do it by the, the 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 only thing you're changing is instead of the offhand having to be a BA, it's just your action. It's more like tradition and a little old. Yeah, like we're uh, we're like three point five had it where as long as you didn't move, you would just bop bop bop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also the qualifier to that that it was also at a minus two even. Yeah. Feet. So I'm saying is that minus two cost of feet, or do you still have that minus? Two? Let me uh, see there, if I can't find the actual text for you. Legacy. So there's there's, there's benefits and perceived negatives to it. Um, there is going to be some number inflation as you have enchanted weapons and stuff like that, yeah. and weapons that have special abilities uh, on offhands, but it's just about kind of determining where we want to take it, because you can also just put, hey, your offhand attack does not do its abilities unless it's used as bonus action, something like that. Essentially, whenever you take the attack action while wielding two light weapons, I mean, make an additional attack with your offhanded weapon. Okay. And I basically... Okay, I got you. Yeah. So, As part of the attack action. It doesn't require any action on your end. Like, no basic yes. action, nothing like that. So, uh -huh. there is some issues. Like, it does make, like, dual-wielding hand crossbows weird, but the only... <laughs> but you would also have to spec into that, mm -hmm. right? Like you would have to specialize in it. Oh yeah. Like you would be straight up like any concerns we, we would we would have, you have to spec into like seventy five percent of them. Which at oh, yeah. th th that point you're 
I I'm trying to find the base rules. The, the playtest materials on D&D Beyond are all just listing as this playtest period has ended. And I'm like, well, fuck you. Uh, um, I, I'm okay. guessing you only get. I'm guessing you don't get the extra attack for every yeah. round of attack. Say if you're a fighter with dual weapons and you're, you know, get five attacks, you're not getting ten attacks. Yeah, I, I believe the uh, extra attack <laughs> is once per round. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that does open us the up the ability to make feats that allow us to have like you can make a secondary one. If you have extra attack. The only yeah, class... which... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. The only class that I'm aware of that can even take, like, ridiculous amounts of attacks is a 3-5 German. Oh, thank you. Where, as long as they're dancing, they get, like, 20 attacks or something. At 20 level. The, the larger issue is when you tack on weapons in general. Um, anytime you change the weapons, it then makes the offhand weapon uh, that much stronger. Because there will be a point where we are enchanting weapons, and a if the enchantment is the same between one-handed weapons and uh, two-handed weapons, say the enchantment are the same strength, someone can have two of those one-handed weapons opposed to the one person who has the one two-handed weapon. That and is then it true. Balance off. It does add a doubling money sink, though. So instead of spending like yeah. you know six thousand, they're spending twelve thousand. <laughs> Which just goes back to my point of if if you really, really, really want to like fully like bust it, you got to spend dope ass yeah. money to do it or else you're you're still in the same thing where you're only going to have your main hand be the, the I don't know, like enchanted dagger, white get a dagger, not a mm -hmm. short sword, I don't know, but whatever. The main reason, uh, I was wanting to bring this up is because, as has been noted in chat, uh, Cyric 5e does have an abundance of BA actions, mm -hmm. uh, bonus actions, um, and 2-up and fighting generally is not worth it at a certain point with the options that we have, um, it, which kind of kills the build. Yeah, at least with this change, with some tweaking, it's it's not going to be too handy, uh, a weapon. Like, it, it, it's... Not going to beat the 2d6, you know, mm -hmm. maul or great sword in damage. It'll be behind it, but it'll at, you'll at least be on par. Well, are they are rogues able to sneak attack with no. that? No, okay, sneak attack at one place once per round. All right, I was just making sure, or once per turn, technically, because you can get on the actions because that would make rogues a little, um, yeah. crazy. Yes, um, but I do see that there are people who are against this idea. Um, so, specifically, I believe you're still against it, Keyhole. I want to get your, your thoughts. You've heard our reasons for it. I'd like to hear I'm going to unmute for that. So, uh, for the case of rogues proccing it on the extra attack, they can, but yes, they can only do it once per turn. So they can actually attack with the first one, choose not to uh, proc sneak attack, and then when the second one hits, they can proc it on that one. So you can pick and choose when yes. it goes off. Oh, um, for the sake of uh, you know, just extra damage, piling the extra stuff on, um, I mean, depends on the scale of, you know, what you uh, power scaling of the world that you want and whatnot. Uh, like it, if you're giving pretty much everyone the option of just a free extra attack, plus I think you can technically Add, if you take the primal change, then you can actually add another attack in the same turn. Uh, it, people can start getting some ridiculous stuff in there, but that's kind of just dependent on like you know specific builds and whatnot. So it's not mm -hmm. too crazy until uh, later levels and magic stuff starts getting weird. Well, so, there are there actually is a few things that you can do, and I've done this with short before, where uh, he used to dual wield. What you can do is you can essentially take your main attack, your offhand attack, drop your weapon, cast a spell with your open hand, and then you can continue to do that throughout the thing. And it makes it mechanically okay. Later on, it'll become an issue because if it may become an issue because of enchantment and increased weapon, and I also would have to review every single weapon to see if there's any ties with one-handed weapons that have special abilities or anything like that, which would also 
make it significantly better than wielding a two-handed weapon. The question is, is there a limitation on how many enchantments you can have on a single weapon? There is, yes. In the yeah. uh, crafting system, your weapon's quality does limit how many enchantments you can have. That makes sense. Well, yes, it is a gold sink, and I do think... I think overall it should be fine. Uh, I would think if we create a a feat that would let you offhand attack with every one of your attacks, it would have to be a level locked feat, and we would also have to give something similar to two handed weapon attacks. Kind of like uh, what is it? Improved two weapon fighting in Pathfinder. And I do also think that uh, with it, like you would never want to take the the two weapon fighting feat because yeah, okay, yeah, you can add your proficiency or whatever for damage or your mod for damage mm -hmm. uh, to the second one, but that's at that point it's just not worth it for one extra. You know what you're going to do an extra four damage rather than take a feat that can probably add another attack at some point or you know yeah. more People damage. Are already not taking that feat though, so that's a neither True. here or there. Because nobody's too up and fighting, <laughs> unless they have lack of bonus action uh, economy. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think for the uh, the attack drop cast, uh, pick up and swing. It's a little weird. Um, yeah. But I also have mechanics in the game that they could technically do that in a way already, mm -hmm. without actually having to drop the weapon. Also, because you can have quick draw sheath, which let you pull out. For free, essentially, you can pull out your weapon without having to use an item attraction. Also, the anyone who has a bow at level one can take the feat to get the extra shot mm -hmm. arrow, mm -hmm. shot, and yeah. and they can straight up attack three times at level one, mm -hmm. or or twice at level one. You're not; it's not going to create a power vacuum that we can't handle because there's already several options we have in Cyric that. Yeah, I know, because fucking Monty did it, piece of shit. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it's not going to create a power vacuum where it's going to screw over DMs. It'll it'll just even out across the board. And and of course, yes, a, as we go up higher, right, we, we get into Tier 2, we get into Tier 3. Everything's going to be bonkers anyway. Yeah, with the... Uh, with, the with the... With the uh, with people taking like multi classes, people doing Pam into you know a, a three hit Nova, like it, it's not going to. I, I'm not too worried about so many attacks per round. Yeah. Um, as an example of something that could be done with just a bow in the system. Uh, you could have, I believe, I think it was 16 attacks in one round. Yes. I think, uh, I think Sleepless, who uses it in our home games, he gets, like, four at five on top of the extra shot. Yeah. yeah. I remember, uh, Sky was playing in my Sunday game. They're still in the Sunday game, but, uh, they were playing an arcane archer, 14th level fighter, and just machine gun destroyed things. Mm -hmm. So, it, yeah, um, high level play is going to get bonkers, and everyone should be prepared for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's just high level D&D &D in general. Mm -hmm. uh, I think at high level, we will have to take a look at Rogue. Um, their damage will fall off significantly as we go into higher levels, because, uh, uh, you know... Casters. Yeah. Spellcasters mm. plus fighters. regular melee fighters are going to be able to do a lot more damage because yeah. they're able to enact sneak attack only on once per turn or once per round. But that's something we can discuss when it yeah. comes. Up. You can also come up with the uh, the update to Rogue when I yeah. finish it. So, it, yeah, like Keo's not wrong. Like it, mm -hmm. you can't really fix that. Like fighters just going to beat a Rogue out at yeah. later anyway. But or, or, or a paladin doing a smite mm -hmm. is just going to do the same thing. Rogue wins the skill game, so it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. The the tr trade for damage is trade for being able to, like, hey, I climb a rope with plus 13 expertise. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. Yeah, like. 
Now, now that being said, we could also go with the thing where you can only smite once a turn. No. No, <laughs> no that, would, that, would, that would ruin Paladin. The whole point of Paladin <laughs> is that you just waste all your spell slots in one round. It's true. Exactly. Uh, this does remind me, though, about a... Uh, <laughs> someone brought up the, the arcane smite that I gave Warlocks. Um, mm -hmm. And the combo wombo can occur from that, and I need to, I need to, I need to fix that wombo. They, yeah. If you I, do damage with it, someone just instantly falls prone, no save, and I, I need to make it a save attached to the prone. I, 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 I peek, peek into there every now and then just see what they're they're cooking yeah. up, and I'm like, you guys know this doesn't work as written, right? Like, in yeah, every yeah. DM slightly runs stuff different, so you're. You're trying to play the game of you want to break something, but you know you're you're probably not going to win that game. The one thing I do want to suggest, and I brought it up in questions, mm -hmm. was that uh, we make expertise the same throughout all the classes because right now expertise is different between all three of the classes that gain it with the same name. That's fair. If I remember right, Chrono brought something up. Up about that before. I think Bard has the same expertise. It doesn't. As, really? They can't take tools. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'll I'll update it to uh Bards can't take tools, rogues can only take thieves tools, and art artificers can take any skills and tools. And barbarians can only take the uh, update to barbarian gives them expertise, by the way. Yeah. Um But uh okay, yeah, no, I will I'll make sure the options they can select are all the same. So they can take any skill or any tool that they're proficient in. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was looking through and I was like, oh my god, this is confusing. This is going to mm -hmm. get confusing for DM. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, a, it's not a huge deal, but, you know, it does help out a little bit. Um... Oh, yeah, any any other issues with switching to the one D and D version of Totem Fighting? Anything that's like we should not have this? Well, we already covered the monk thing before because they can't. I was about to bring up monks. I was like, does it? Is, well, it, no. Well, are because... there any are there any weapons that cause that you can un unarm strike? Because any monk there, weapon. There, yeah, monk any weapon. monk weapon. So if you pull out, weapon. like, two claw weapons, because mm -hmm. most claw weapons are going to be monk, or the new word for it, brawling, um, and then you can dual wield those, and then you can flurry blows, pop, pop, pop. Mm -hmm. So essentially, we're giving monks one more attack. Essentially. Which is fine. But they, could, pop, they already pop. could do that before. Yeah. Because yeah. monk weapons existed in base 5. I, I, I do kind of agree with Sack, like, the, like, for example, giving paladins that extra, like, 5-10 feet on aura is, like, there's bonkers shit, and then there's, like, he hasn't moved the entire round. <laughs> yeah. The wall. Yeah. Is yeah. Essentially the, yeah. The, hey, I'm gonna hit you twice with a two-handed weapon, drop ah, one -handed okay. weapon, pick up a uh, one-handed weapon, and then use yes. it. So, two concentrations is definitely concerning. Uh, I've been playing with casters who've taken this in every one of my games uh, since I've made it a viable option, because as a caster, you see this, you're like, yes, I want this. Um, it does not get too crazy. I've also not seen people build to a we'll call it optimized play with this feat. I've not seen people be like, I'm taking the perfect option and the perfect option to combine them into the perfect cancerous combo i've not seen that yet but uh if yeah. i remember right when when it was me you and chrono talking about it in balance i think chrono brought up the idea that even if you have two concentrated spells um you you only make one and if you fail they both drop i can see that being an update yeah that, the, that would be good that would be very because the because then Yes, you're getting like, you know, we'll, we'll say hex and hunter's mark or some shit. Mm -hmm. um, 
then if if you fail, both are gone, which I think is a fair a fair drawback to being able to do two concentration spells. Yeah, it's before yeah. level, yeah. Because you can also just lose concentration from being stunned. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So technically, but, you can't take the feat until you're hit fourth level because they fourth level ASI. Other, if you don't put your fourth level ASI into it, though, you have to wait till sixth level to take it. So earliest is fourth. He is that why you play a rogue so you don't have to worry about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But uh, yeah, I'll just update the wording for Empowering. Uh, do you think that's a decent enough update, Zach, for it? I mean, it's definitely a powerful feat. Right now, this feat is, if you're a caster, you should take this feat. I'm going to be making more caster feats, so there's more options. Or, like, things that you're like, I should have that. I mean, combat casting, or uh, war caster is a huge one that's pretty powerful, just base, and I'm going to update that one, too, and stuff. Okay. I mean, we we did let everyone know that, like, hey, look, we will be changing stuff if it gets out of hand. Mm-hmm. Like, they were pre-warned. Yeah, and I mean, it's not like we're not going to offer retraining and we'll, yeah. we'll take whatever yeah. you want. We'll figure we're out not, your optimal build again. Yeah, we're not going to dick players, but at the same time, you know, like, you know, everybody has to have fun here, and if you're one turning a boss, then that's a two-way street, but... Three other players are not going to be enjoying that game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, there'll be three new subclasses for Monk when I get to that. But, uh, Monk's lower on the list. I'm just going down alphabetically, so... <laughs> It's gonna be a bit before I get a monk. I also need to put uh, finish my update to barbarian because I made the wording as I said last week for spheres, so I have to make the wording fit base five e now. So yeah. Any which ways? Uh, anything else anyone would like to bring up? All right. In that case, I think going forward, we should try out the uh, two weapon fighting change that one D&D does. That will allow two weapon fighting builds to be more viable in Cyric 5e. Um, and anything other than that, though, I think that's a good point to call the meeting. Appreciate everyone's faces, all that good stuff, all the work you've been helping out with. Um, you know, prepping for, for launches, it will be uh, as it's coming up. And... Uh, we're gonna we're gonna close out the meeting here. Uh, goodbye. Um, blah, blah, blah.